that was without the microphone being on. Imagine, imagine how much trouble you're in now. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. I'm so excited that, first of all, that the glory of God came into the presence of his house long before I did. And I noticed that when Pastor Bird walked in, it was magnified even more when the father of the house comes in. Amen? Yeah. And then it was magnified even more and more when Pastor Lucy walked in. It was beautiful because she began to give a miracle and praise report. Plus, Nana Kuli style, she gave some cracks, right? She gave cracks. <laughs> she said, how many of us went on the mission to the prison? A couple of hands went up. She was like, that's nice, but I like to see more hands next Amen. time, right? Amen. Amen. Yeah. So I love that. And then she also noticed, and I've, I've never told them, that I do come here to Nanakuli at least twice a week, and every time I pass by, even when I'm driving to YNI High School on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I always lift my hand to Fishers of Men. Amen. I always lift my hand in blessing to the Fishers of Men Ohana, which is all of you folks, because you guys had my back. And I wanted to come back and say thank you for that. I know I'm going to start into the word of the Lord. And today we're going to have a fierce prophecy. Everybody say fierce prophecy. Fierce, fierce prophecy. prophecy. Thank you. Everybody say be ready. Be ready. I like it. You got to put a little salt on that bugger. A little bit of sass. Be ready. Right? Be ready. And so I'm going, to, I'm going to give that prophecy. But before I do, I think I would be really embarrassed and ashamed and I am I am Don O'Brien thank you so much for that introduction I am never shame I ain't got no shame in my game because there ain't no shame in Jesus name amen I ain't got no shame in my game because there ain't no shame in Jesus name and so even yesterday I was at this funeral bro I went and I grabbed they go Don can you grab like a couple of desserts for our table this was a Japanese couple I was like oh that's cute I ain't got no shame and the girl, lady was like I'm embarrassed I don't want to you know I I saw the brownies with like the mochi, butter mochi on the bottom. I like, I wanted one. I go, oh, I'll get you two, sister. She goes, no, shame, shame, shame. I go, no shame in your game, girl. And I went over there and grabbed one tray about this big. <laughs> Pastor Bird is wearing my Polynesian shirt. I was like, I thought you said you wanted a saucer. I grabbed this tray, right? And West Side was there. My Ark of Safety family was there, the Aminas. And they would roll up behind me and go, Girl, that's serious. <laughs> you know you're good when West Side is saluting you, right? That's serious. But I wanted to come back and thank you because I would be ashamed if I didn't thank my, my Fishers of Men Ohana. It was almost six years ago to this day, Lucy and Bert. Almost six years. And you know God's timing, right? is perfect timing and so god brought me back on this seventh beginning of the seventh year which the seventh year is the year of jubilee right amen you knew that and so six years ago to this day february 2014 i was fired from my public job remember i used to be on 95.5 the fish i was the radio dj some of us are old enough to remember back then those of you are too young google it okay google it but I used to wake up the state of Hawaii on the Christian Amen. radio station every morning. I woke up the spirit men and the spirit women, and I would say, it's the dawn of another beautiful day in Hawaii. Oh, let's get ready to rumble. And then I would sing, Lottie Dottie, happy yep. birthday. Right? Yeah. I sang the Lottie Dottie Happy Birthday song. And then I would see, I would do the Cakey Corner Contest every Monday through Friday. Every day I created this contest because I wanted the children to get into the Word of God yes, yeah. and the Word of God to get into our children. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. And so I created this contest where we would memorize scripture together. And uh, I would say, uh, d be divine number nine at 296 Fish, 296 3474. That's divine number nine for the Cakey Corner Contest this morning. Our scripture is 1 John 4 4. You guys are like, wow, this sister, she can rip at the lip, yeah? <laughs> hey, that's right, bro, because I'm a big mouth for a big guy. Oh, yes. And when Jesus comes back, he's still going to have to interrupt this big mouth, right? He'll be like, Sister Don, Sister Don, call him my, excuse me, but I'm Jesus. This is the second coming. That means we're going. And he'll have to interrupt me because I can turn around and say, that's nice. Thank you, Jesus. But you go on ahead because I still got things to say, people to save, and people to, all these things to do, right? So you go ahead and start the bridal feast, right? Just save me some ice creams and brownies. 
But six years ago, thank you to this day, I was let go. I was fired actually on 2-21-14, and I want you to watch the dates on this. It was my last day on air. It was one week prior that a prophet of God called me, and he said, Donald Bryan, you're going to be fired from your job. And I was scared because I had no money. I had always lived on missionary wages. I was getting about $45,000 a, a year at the time, which sounds like a lot for Nanakuli, but you gotta get 70,000 to survive a year in Hawaii. Yeah. And radio doesn't pay very much. Before that, I worked in church, and that pays even less than radio. So I was stuck doo-doo scared, okay? I was really scared. But I prayed because our God is Jehovah Jireh, amen? Yeah, amen? And he said, if I can rain manna down from heaven, if I have to bring a bird to you to feed you, like I did to the prophet in the Old Testament, Donald Bryan, I can bring it for you. Amen. Do not be afraid. How many of you can receive a word like that this yeah, morning, amen? amen? Some of us, and I include myself, I live in a homeless shelter to this day because I'm ministering there, and I minister here in Nanakuli. That's my job, ministering to the homeless. And so we can receive a word that Jehovah Jireh, he will provide. He does provide. The very next week after that prophet called me, I in fact was fired because I didn't sign an illegal contract. Duke Iona, our brother, was my lawyer and he said, this is, a, this is illegal. So I didn't sign the contract. I was let go. I was fired on a Wednesday. That very day, watch this, God is not, he is the author and the finisher of the book of life, amen? amen? The beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega, and on that day, the very day I was fired, I went from the meeting with my boss where I was fired, and I was supposed to have lunch with a certain pastor, Bird Mahilona. <laughs> and when I went and I saw Bird, remember that Bird, we went to Nico's in town, he drove all the way into town, and I looked at him and I said, brother, I, I know I'm supposed to come preach Sunday, that's what we're going to talk about today, but remember this Bird, I said... <laughs> Brother, I, I can't come because I'm a scrapper. I'm half tongue and half Irish. I got all the temper and a body for back it up, baby. <laughs> so you best back your truck up, right? That's why I like the West Side. And, but I know when I scrap, Friday will be my last day. Sunday, I'm just going to go home and start crying. I'm going to be crying. So I can't come and minister. I'm so sorry, Pastor Bird. And Pastor Bird looked at me and goes, Oh, no, I'm so sorry, Sister Dawn, because... You, you got to come and speak. It's auntie's birthday. And she like you sing the Lottie Dottie happy birthday song. Right? Is that not what she said? Whose birthday was it? This auntie, you said it was like her 89th birthday or something. He goes, and not only that, get one other auntie. It's her birthday too. So you got to sing to the two aunties. And they waiting already. I said, bah, it's Wednesday. He goes, they waiting. They know it. Donald Bryan's going to come sing. So, long story now coming to an end, I came in obedience to the Lord and my brother Bird and Lucy Maelona and I sang the Lottie Dottie Happy Birthday song. I preached the Word of God and by the end of that day, all the men's were standing in the back and you guys had your shirts lifted, you guys was pounding your chest and you were going, Don O'Brien, Nana Cooley got your back, Don O'Brien, Nana Cooley got your back and I was like, praise Jesus, we still love the Lord, this is not an octagon, this is not MMA, remember they're all standing up and I was seriously small kind scared because you guys wanted to scrap, the devil, right, the devil, but there was something that happened that was a huge miracle that day and I've told this story so many times everywhere I go. This makes the seventh year since I've told this to you guys. I never came back and thanked you, so I call them mine, but I'm thanking you today. Thank you, Jesus. If you were here, you remember. There was a love offering. Thank you, brother. Every man, woman, and keiki stood up. I remember when I was a kid in church in Tonga, my grandma used to put five semiti, five cents, in my hand. She would make me go give. Every keiki stood up, and they all came and gave. It was one huge koa bowl, remember? That thing was massive, and they had to pour it out because it was pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing. Yeah. They had to pour it out again, remember, so much. You had to get a bigger bag than my purse. And I went home, and I was so tired from crying. The Spirit of the Lord was strong, and I counted the money after I woke up from a nap. That's how drained and tired I was. It was over $3,000. Thank you, Jesus. Jehovah Jireh, he Hallelujah. provides. And I began to cry afresh. Because I remember my heart and I said, Lord, I hardly ever get any money from any church. I've ministered for the Lord since I was 13 years old. This year I'll be the big 5-0. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. I've never made that much money in one day. And I've traveled to Texas. I've traveled to Taiwan. I've traveled the whole world one day. And I remember when I told Bird, I cannot come because I'm going to be crying. Plus, I already know. This is when Garage Church, Nana Cooley, how much money could they possibly give me, right? I don't know. might be a zip pack, and I got a tie from my zip pack, right? You guys give me one musubi, spam musubi. I'm going to have to cut off one tenth and give that to the Lord. So I said, how can when small Garage Church in Nana Cooley, and that day the Lord went, I'm Jehovah Jireh. Bless me. Yeah. Nana Cooley got you back. And ever since then, I've always told that story, and I say, not only does Nana Cooley have my back, but I got Nana Cooley's back. Thank you. Amen. This may not be my Oneha now. This is not the land where I was born. This is my Oneha now. You take me in, you made me Ohana. And you know my testimony, Pastor Bird was alluding to, that I got left at Honolulu International Airport when I was nine years old. My mom left me over there with my sisters. They're all small. And so I have a, a past of abandonment, but that's not my future. Thank you. That's right. And you guys, in the spirit of Abba Father, the Father God, you and Hanai, and adopt me in. And I came here today simply to say, if you hear one thing, Ohana, you my Ohana, thank you. Thank you for catching my back and giving me all that money. You guys had my back. I'm not ever going to ditch you guys. That's why I come to Nanakuli at least twice a week. As Pastor Bird said, I teach up in the high school Mondays. I teach all of ninth grade. So tell your kids, act right, okay, in my class. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to bring Lucy over there. She'll okay. <laughs> And then we do prayer at the pole. We still, every first Monday of the month, we have a few more until school ends. We did the first one, and right away after we said amen, it was September was National Prayer at the Pole Day. We scrambled the jets. 24 hours later, we made sure it happened at Nanakuli High School, home of the Golden Hawks, right? Black and yellow, black and yellow. <laughs> Still some black up in there, right? Uh, and there was over 50 people came out from Nanakuli. That was one of the biggest in the islands, in the nation. Nanakuli right here in the valley. So I come here quite often, and as I pass by every time, I always send a prayer. You know, after I did, I didn't come back right away. I did come to a women's conference, and I believe I'm going to get to come back May 9th. Because after I saw you guys, I spun out real fast. The Lord had me become press secretary for Duke Iona 2014. Thank you folks for fighting on the front lines. I was the big mouth for that guy too, press secretary, fancy name for big mouth. And then we did that. We lost the election, but we won a spiritual battle for the state of Hawaii, right? When you speak a good word over the people, over all, we salted this Aina. We salted the people. And so we lost the election, but we won a spiritual battle. And after that, the Lord took me out to Molokai. Some of you remember that. Somebody yes. just came up and asked, Sister Don, you still living yeah. Molokai? I said, no, I came back to the other wilderness. Kalihi, bra. I live Kalihi now. <laughs> <laughs> but I went to Molokai because God had to do a spiritual surgery inside me. And just like it says in the Bible, John the Baptist went to the wilderness. Jesus went to the wilderness. Don O'Brien went Molokai. And I attended a Baptist church, so now I'm Dawn the Baptist. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. And I say that half joking, but at the time I was living there, God did a spiritual surgery. I had to take a lot of pride out of my heart. How many of you know that the original sin is pride? Amen. Original sin didn't happen in the Garden of Eden. It actually happened upstairs in the throne room of God. Amen. Satan had the pride spirit, amen? amen? And he said, instead of giving the worship of all the angels to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and taking the blessings of the Lord and giving it out to the angels, he suddenly said, I want your worship. Worship me, amen? amen? And that is a pride spirit. And somehow I had let some of that pride in my heart. Anybody who starts to be in the public eye, you start to think you're a celebrity, you start to think, wow, I have such a gift, I'm so talented. And God struck me down and he took me to the backside of Molokai. But one day after he was done, because God is a good God and there's no condemnation in Christ. Amen? Amen. He does surgery to set us free. And I've been set free from so many addictions, family of God. I ain't here to judge nobody. I ain't got no stones to throw at you. Hello, I'm Tongan. We built us a rock wall with that stuff. <laughs> I ain't throwing them that's money right there. <laughs> And so I, I said to the Lord, when I, he came to me one day, he said, you time to go back to the big city, the big fight. 
And I said, nah, I kind of like being out in Molokai. You can go fishing, pick up pee, live off the land. And he said, no. And I said, okay, well, you're going to have to show me a big sign because I don't want to go back. I already did a bunch of big fights on the fish. We fought against same-sex marriage in the state of Hawaii. Remember that? We did the Duke Iona fight. So I said, nah, I like cruising. I like this life. And he goes, okay, I'm going to show you one sign. Next morning, I'm driving up. The hill, I was on the west side of Molokai, there's like no people, mostly deer, right? That's all. Nobody listened to Donald Bryan anymore, so I'd have to run after deer. Deer! Hey deer! Oh deer! Okay, never mind. And uh, I was all by myself and oh, mostly just animals. I'm going up that west side, Kaluakoi Road, up to the top to go visit my family. And right there, I said, it better be so obvious, like an angel of the Lord. Because I'm a demanding woman of God. That's why I'm not married yet. I'm a demanding woman of God. <laughs> the women are laughing and they know it's true. Men, you're feeling the elbow right now, right? Usually it's the elbow ministry. I said, better be the angel of the Lord. And right there, I saw the Lamb of God. I will not lie to you. Well, out of nowhere, in the backside of red dirt Molokai was the, the, the Lamb of God. And I know this church believes in visions because we got a painting of some of the visions that pastor has had with the fishers of men. Amen. And I saw that angel of uh, the Lamb of God there and he was white and he was sparkly. Like not just white, like Clorox white. Like this thing was effervescent, like rainbows were coming off of him. It was a tiny little lamb. If you know anything about a sheep flock, I've seen them down in New Zealand other places. They don't go by themselves. When you have a little baby lamb, you're going to have a what lamb? A big mama lamb watching over her baby. Then you're going to have one big daddy lamb, right, or ram. And he's going to watch over the whole family. This was the lamb of God. And he was standing right by the side of the road and he was staring at me. I asked everyone on Molokai after that. I said, do we have lambs on this island? They said, Don, you've been trying out that other version of ice on our island, yeah? <laughs> I said, no, but I prayed, <laughs> had a vision. And so prepare ye the way of the Lord. Everyone say, be ready. Be ready. I'm now Don the Baptist. I love that my brother Bird walked up to me before we even started. You didn't even know that story, did you, Bird? Pastor Bird didn't know, and I, and I have been given this commission to prepare the people. And so I love that he brings me back to where I started, back to Nanakuli. So today, I'm going to go very quick with the fierce prophecy. Fierce often means very scary, but that's not scary to people on the west side, right? Because you guys is a fierce people. Fierce to fight and fierce to love. Amen? Amen. You guys, when you love somebody like you loved me, that's your ride or die. Amen? Amen. You guys are fierce to scrap. In fact, I was emceeing a wedding right out here on the beach. Not, not that long ago, but I'm not going to say how long because some of you will know who it is. Because I know Nanakuli small. I was, the biggest fight I ever saw was at a wedding Nanakuli style, right? You guys are laughing already because you know it's true. And now you're going, I know who it is now. <laughs> biggest wedding scrap, and I was the MC, and the auntie was on the tour. It's all the Tahitian dancers, and they all in get away because, I mean, this was a mob fight. was rolling off, and it was the bride family, and the, everybody was going... And so the, the auntie on the two she goes, Don O'Brien, you better get up there and call the name of Jesus right now. And so I did. I grabbed that microphone. I, all right, in the name of Jesus, with no weapon form shall prosper. And right now, I ask you to cast down the spirit of anger. And I started going for it, right? And then afterwards, everything calmed down. The spirit of the Lord came. And then I went to the bride and I asked her, sister. What was that? I mean, I love MMA. I'm from Hilo, BJ Pen it up, right? Max Holloway all day, every day. But what was that? She goes, ah, that's family. I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. I told that to Moki Boy Kamealoha. He goes, I know that was family. <laughs> So you guys are fierce, but I'm going to go real fast and fierce this morning. First one is I'm going to out of three parts today, and I am going to go fast. One is a prophecy about Hawaii. Everybody say, my prophecy. My prophecy. Good for you. Second part, I will give you Jesus' hit list of end time events. Is that going too fast, too furious? Say no. no. Number three, I'm going to talk about how then should we live. Because as I do this, it may tend to get a little scary for some people. 
Not Nanakuli people, you guys is fierce, but for a lot of people, they're afraid of revelation. I said, oh, that's cute. Uh, we're from the West Side. That's just comics for us. But some people can tend to get scared. So I always say, don't be scared, be prepared. Say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Good. So we're going to get prepared. And the last part I will say is how we should live. First, though, is the prophecy on Hawaii's head. Can you roll with that one, sister? Do you know how to get there? We're on next. Sorry, see, I'll rip at the lips so fast. Very good. And then you just press play, yeah? When you get to the blue prophecy on Hawaii, slide number three. Next, next. Perfect. All right, prophecy on Hawaii. Everybody again, say, that's my prophecy. That's my prophecy. There have been many preachers, and probably Pastor Bird, Pastor Lucy have said this. You probably heard this from people like Wayne Cordero, Ralph Moore. I've heard it from pastors and prophets who fly up from South America who have been part of transforming our world. Hawaii, I've heard it up at First Assembly of God, you know, on Red Hill. And they all say the same thing. Hawaii, put your hand on your head, everybody, just like this. Hawaii, say Hawaii. Hawaii. Is going to be. It's going to be. The first. The first. Christian state. Christian state. In. In the United States of America. The United States of Hawaii, America. Hawaii, one more time. Hawaii is going to be the first Christian state. It's going to be the first Christian state in the United States of America. In the United States of America. You can go ahead and put your hand down. And if that's true, that means Hawaii is the 50th state. The 50th will be the first. The last shall become the first. The least shall become the greatest. And the tail shall become the head. And we will lead this nation in the third great revival of the history of the United States of America. You see, there have already been two great revivals in this nation. And they have happened at the direst, darkest, most hellacious times in the history of the United States. So when you hear me, and you said it out of your own mouth, say that Hawaii will be the first Christian state in the United States of America, you might think to yourself, oh, that's nice, Don. But do you know where we live? Do you know what it looks like on the west side, much less the United States of America? We're all fighting so much right now. And how many of you have heard the Bible say that a house divided will fail? Right. Do you know that this nation right now is so divided? It is the most divided it's been in the history of our short nation. Not even during the Civil War, which was a, almost the divorce of two parts of our country, almost divided, the worst divorce. We're more divided than the Civil War. And the house divided will fail. Our great strength, we are the most prosperous, the richest, most powerful, right? Most blessed nation in all of history, the United States of America. And that greatness comes from one identity, under God, indivisible. We pledge allegiance to the flag of the... Of the what? United States, United States of America. Yes, Our great strength is in that we are united. Amen. Because once again, the devil knows that a house divided will fail. Amen? Amen. And so he comes in and he sneaks in between Adam and Eve and he causes the first great divorce in the Garden of Eden right from the get. That was the first divide because a house divided will and if we continue to scrap each other, I get so tired. And I know I'm an outsider. I'm hanaid into your family. But it's always West Side, I versus Nanakuli. Family, we're all on the same coast. Can I just say that? We're all from this side. In fact, we moved back and forth. I know people went Nana, Nana Ikapono Elementary, then moved over and went to I Intermediate, came back and graduated, right? God delivered them back to the homeland. Not just joking. But we're all at one side. Just took, took you guys a while with that. We're all one family. Yesterday I was in a funeral over in Kaneohe and I seen people from Ark of Safety and Nanakuli rolling up. Because we're all the same family. But we continue to fight I versus Nanakuli. I said from now on my mission is I teach I High School, I teach Nanakuli High School. You got the W, then you got me and the N. It's W-I-N spells win. 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 Right. 
Because a house united will conquer in the name of Christ. Amen. It says in Psalm, the Psalm that the president himself, Donald John Trump, read it during his inauguration. He said, Psalm 130, how good and pleasing it is when the brethren live together in harmony, in Amen. unity, in togetherness. Because we cannot be conquered from the outside. The devil knows he has to conquer us from the outside. From the inside, I'm sorry. So the prophecy is we will be the first Christian state in the United States of America. And that makes sense that the least shall become the greatest and yes, we will amen. lead the third revival. And I, I have a friend who comes and she said, well, why would that be true, Don? I said, that's our name. Polynesian style is just like Jesus style. Your name is very important. Amen, family? Amen. Whatever your name is. If my name is Kaleo, that means the voice. Kaleo Kalani, the voice of heaven. That means I was prophesied over by my ancestors, by my kopuna, by my grandma, my grandpa, my aunties who prayed and said, give her the name. Your name is important and our name in Hawaii is the Aloha State. Everybody say Aloha. Aloha. In that is the ha, the breath of life. Amen. And so I said, don't question why we get to do it. It's our identity. It's in the marrow of our spiritual bones. It's in our na'au. Our every heartbeat is the breath of life. And we will lead this nation. And we have to. It is time. So second part today, next scripture, next sign. Right here, stay there. Are we in the end times? Are we, are we seeing the signs of the times and the times of the signs? Next scripture, please. Do we see Jesus coming up ahead? This is what the news just reported January 24th, 2020, which is like two weeks ago, that we are two minutes away from midnight. There is an association called Doomsday Clock that is done by the atomic scientists. They study the nuclear threat on the face of Earth and they see that North Korea is already threatening. Russia has a missile that goes 27 times faster than the speed of sound. Faster than you can hear me talking right now, they can fly a missile and hit anywhere on Earth. And so this is the headline that came out two weeks ago and most of us missed it because we were getting ready for the Super Bowl party. Sorry, I'm just being real, right? Yes. 49ers, no. There was no black and yellow. Why were you guys even watching? Stop. Yeah. Just joking. Steelers will make a comeback. That's right. Right? That's right and 49ers thought they had it and then fourth quarter, we all our heads blew off, right? If it didn't already blow off during that stripper halftime show... <laughs> only one man I was at a Christian conservative Super Bowl party only one man walked out everybody was like oh yeah 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 it's like brother I'm gonna have to lay hands on the back of your head no condemnation in Christ just joking <laughs> So this is what came out two weeks ago. But what does God say? I'm going to have you go to the next scripture. What do, we know what the world says, that we're close to the end, but what does God say? Will you read this out loud with me? This is the prophecy in Matthew 24, which is also in Mark 13, which is also in Luke 17, Luke 21, which means God repeated the prophecy many times. Ready? Go. Tell us, when will all this happen? What sign will signal your return, Jesus, and the end of the world? Jesus told them, don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name claiming, I am the Messiah. They will deceive, lie, and you will hear about wars and rumors of wars. But don't panic, yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. But all of this is the first of the birth pains with more to come. Pause. Now, right there, we already see in red a couple of big blues clues. Remember that TV show? Yeah. I love that show because I can follow along, right? Oh, thank God, there's a blue footprint there, the blue dog, Bungo. This is a couple of Jesus blues clues. It's in red. 
and he tells us a couple how many of you surf on this side right I used to surf Waikiki I love surfing and when you get the waves coming is it just one wave nope. it's a whole set right you can get three four waves sometimes this shows us at that last line it says right here this is the first of the birth pains how many of you have given birth and you know the first set Wow, those things crank. I don't know, because I never gave birth, but I like watching other women do it. It's it's good birth control, let me tell you that. Hallelujah. And I'm not having sex, so not supposed to. But you know, you watch these women, and the first set, they're like, oh, okay, okay, oh, that was kind of sore. That was the cute set, right, of birth pains, right? Right, Lucy? Then you get towards the end, and these women are screaming swear words in alien foreign languages, right? <laughs> My father thought he was going to lose his life, right? And that was after me. I was 36 hours of labor. She said everything in Tongan, English, Chinese, any kind of language. But she still had three more children with him. So whatever, first set. Okay, go to the next one and we'll finish this scripture because I want you guys to know the word. This is going to the next slide. This is going to warn us about false prophets. But the next scripture is coming. Maybe when Jesus does, but it'll come. Got it? There should be a second one, sis, before this. There, okay, the one after this. Okay, ready? Go, family. Then you will be arrested, persecuted, killed. You will be hated all over the world because you are my followers. Many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. Many false prophets will appear and deceive many. Deceive means lie. Sin will be rampant everywhere and the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And the good news about the kingdom will be preached in the whole world so that all the nations will hear it and then finally the end will come. Go to the next slide right away. The top five warnings that you saw there in the red print, the blues clues of Jesus is in red. Number one was what? Number two is what? Number three, persecution and plague. Number four, sin is rampant and love. Number five, false prophets, false teachers, and even a false messiah. Now I'm going to ask you a question looking at this five, and this is not a pop quiz, okay? Don't get all nerdous like my Nanakuli High School class. They just suddenly go cold. Okay, Miss is not really giving us a quiz, right? But this is not a quiz. Take a look at this. Do you think any one of these are happening? Take a good yeah. look. Yes. Yeah. How many of you would agree at least one is happening? Yep. Okay, keep your hand up if you think two is happening. By the way, I'm keeping my hand up. How many of you would dare say three? Three. Okay, maybe four. Everybody in the house, throw out your hand. Okay, all five. And this guy's standing up. I love it. I would raise my feet if I wasn't going to flash you. I have a skirt on right now, right? It's not a halftime show. Sorry, people. You know I can only do that on the west side, right? You know I can't roll into first prayers. They'll be like, oh my gosh, Lord Jesus. Of course, you guys may never call me back. I don't know. But I would be raising my big size 11 tongue and feet and my hands. All five is going down right now. Right now, the world is getting a 100% for prophecies coming to pass. In fact, I'm going to slip this in as a little bit extra. Do you know that every prophecy that needed to happen before the rapture of Jesus Christ, splitting